folks, Mike McFarland here, sitting in my corner with a really good friend of mine, Mr. Joe Coker. Joe and I go back, I don't know, just a couple, two, three years now. Um, and Joe is really, uh, he's from Dallas. He, man, he's got his heart in fishing more than anybody I know. Um, and honestly has done more for me, the YouTube page and the social media. Um, a thank you is not enough. So to get him here in this corner and have him talk with you and be on one of the corners, it, it makes my heart happy. And I can tell him and tell you guys how grateful I am to have this man as a friend. Um, we're going to talk to you about some cool things today. Plastics, making your own plastics and even melting used plastics. Um, there's some benefits to both, both ways. Um, but we're also going to talk to you a little about what Joe does and Joe's YouTube page as well. And I personally ask you, pay attention, listen to what he's got to say, and go find his YouTube page and like it like you like mine. But Joe, you know, um, with all the things going on right now, the, the hardest thing that we're running into is it seems like no one has product. Bass Pro Shops doesn't have it. Zoom, it, it doesn't matter what you're looking for, you can't seem to get it. So much so that uh, Zoom had to make a press release right after iCast because there were so much rumors because, because some of the low supply of the pl soft plastics at places, they had to go, on, go online, do a press release and said, no, we're not selling our business, we're not going out wow. of business, and no, our big distribution plant did not burn down. Those were rumors that were going on at iCast about them that they had to address. Because wow, I had no idea. You know, yeah. I, can, I can really... Just to defer real quick, it's weird to see companies like Frito-Lay owned by Pepsi-Cola and they don't have potato chips. Uh, Gatorade doesn't have Gatorade. You know, we're up in a, in a real deal, a, a worldwide deal right now with, with the unbalance of our system and what's going on. But let's keep it to fishing. So Zoom has a press release. Zoom's fine. They're just, they're just like everybody else, the supply chain is the slow. The supply chain is slow. So everything from making it to getting the products to shipping the products it's just one big channel. Yeah, it's just just slow. Yeah, and and that pre presents problems, especially on a lake like Fort, because these lake these bass get on Pacific colors that you if you don't have them, you're, you're sometimes you're just wasting the cast. Hundred percent. With that in mind, guys, this is what I wanted you to see today. Besides spending some time and getting to know Joe, um, a couple weeks back I showed you some bags of used plastics. Um, I showed you 20 bags, 160 baits of used Zoom Magnum trick worm in a watermelon candy color. Um, I completely had run out. If it wasn't for Joe, I wouldn't have any right now. But I'm going to promise you that what Joe brought me yesterday proves to me, no shadow of a doubt, that these can be remelted and poured back into a perfect worm, the perfect shape that it was, the perfect color that it was, um, with the magic reaction smell that I've put on my baits, they have a, a little bit of a funny smell. Um, I'm certain without the magic reaction, it's a 100% deal. You can absolutely yeah. do this. Uh, lots of people don't think you can melt the plastic, but it's, it's not real difficult to do, but it's one of those things you just have to take your time with and... Um, there's a process to it. I learned it from a, a, a YouTube channel called The World's Worst Fishing, where this guy um, does soft plastics. And I've been doing this for a while. He, I've told him I've been collecting molds for about six months before I even, even poured them. Um, any extra money that I had, I went and, and purchased them. Um, so now I've got pretty much everything that I use in a mold. Um, if I... if so see, see right now, see if I wanted to do watermelon candy, and I couldn't find these magnum trick worms or magnum finesse worms, I can go to Academy or Bass Pro Shop, find a bait in the color that I need, melt them into something I can use. Correct. Oh, that's really cool. So, in other words, we're needing the watermelon candy, and, and we want it in the magnum trick worm. Well, we don't have it. We could buy, we could buy watermelon candy brush hogs. Melt them down and re-pour them into the Magnum trick worm. Or do what Mike does, because not only no, no, he does a really good video that shows you how to repair these. 
but sometimes they get beyond the point where he can repair them. Yep. So the second option is to keep them and melt them down and do this. The process is really not that difficult. You just have to take a few steps. I'm going to go through through that a, a little bit tonight, but I'm going to be start doing videos on my channel where I'm going to go through that. I'm going to show you some. I'm going to invent some of my own colors, some colors that I think that will work pretty good on Fort from my experience in the past. Yes, well, those those flukes that you poured the other day are going to be lights out, game lights yeah. out. Before we do that, your site then. So where where can they see this? Talk okay, stuff. Um, my YouTube channel is Fort Lunker Man. So it's Fort Lunker Man, and you, you'll see me on there. You know, I got stuff about my new Phoenix boat. I've got my own light reports that I do and I also you know do like tackle tips of stuff that little hacks and stuff that I figured out over the years that helps me when um, out on the water. Now, much like me he gives a little bit of a report as well for Lake Fort. I mean you can learn a lot of really good things with him um, you know and, and I suggest you do go follow that page. Back to this now I know you're also not only melting but you're pouring regular yes. as well. Yes um, and um if you're thinking about going to regular, making your own from scratch, like like the the, the uh, flukes that he was talking about that I made the other day, dead on plastics. Dead on plastics is the way to go. They make a uh, plaster saw that doesn't have the real toxic type uh, fumes that these baits can have. Um, they took whatever I can't forget what that chemical's called, but they don't have that in theirs, and um, unlike some of the plaster saw, if you don't have a vacuum chamber to get the air out of them, um, it can put bubbles. But um, I want, like I said, the guy from the world's worst fishing, um, he, you know, he convinced me that you don't need that with these dead on plastics. And what I found to be true, that they don't scorch really easy. Like I said, you just got, you got to experiment. Like the very first set of worms that I, that I poured with them, I thought they were a little bit too soft. Um, I'm going to have to kind of bump up to the next uh, level of their um, hardness on their plastics, but um, I've had good results with them so far. Okay. Now I'm going to show you kind of what we're going to what you kind of need to do this to get started. If you're going to remelt them, if you're going to get them from scratch, you're going to need a few more items. We can talk about that. We can talk that later. But. While he's doing that, I just want to remind you, fork. Lunker Man. That's his YouTube page. F O R K L U N K E R M A N. Fork Lunker Man. Right on. Check that page out. You won't regret. Okay. Here's the items you. If you're gonna remelt, these are these are pretty must items that you're gonna need. First of all, you're gonna need some really really good gloves because you have to heat the. Put it in a Pyrex glass and melt it to. 350. So you're looking at some really, really hot uh, stuff. So you can, you cannot do this without a really good pair of gloves. And I bought these from uh, Lurecraft, and they're made just for this. And you, you can tell they're heavy duty. So they're not just gloves. Yeah, they're just not they're made for yeah. hot. They're, they're made they're, to protect yeah, they're, from heat. You, you, you. They're not like your gloves you buy at the hardware store or anything like that. These yeah. are. Made to you know maybe for even like if you're doing something in a kiln or a autoclave. They're made thing. to protect from heat. They're, yeah, and they're really really good. I can tell you that for a fact. Well, I used to be sponsored by Pro Swim Baits about 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and I can tell you that this plastic right here, the 300 and something degrees, is brutal if you get burned by it. Um, one of my buddies. Little young boy, four years old, put his hand in one of these and just peeled layers off his hand. It was unbelievable. So you want to take heed to being protected. This stuff is, is nothing to be played around with. You will regret it if you get burned. So that is pretty darn heavy duty. I could feel that. That would protect you from any of that hot melted plastic for sure. Another thing you're going to need is a thermometer. This, is, this cost about 25 bucks on Amazon. It's an infrared one. And I can tell you, it works real good. Um, that temperature now is the crit the most critical yeah, point. Yeah, the critical point. Not you, going too hot, not too soft. Not too, too hot. You most definitely want to get 350 degrees. 
remelting, I, you do not want to get, I don't think, I think what I've heard is you don't want to get over 380. That's when they start scorching. Starts changing color and burning. Yes. And if it's got glitter into the ones you remelt, it'll start disintegrating the glitter. The glitter. And that, and, and, and that, that was another thing that, you know, you might want to do if you, if you know the, the glitter combination is buy a little bit extra to that so you can kind of juice it up a little bit. Supplement the loss yeah. of glitter. And the big thing when you're reheating, you want, this is made from, from Lure Craft. And some of this stuff I'll put on a link where you can find this. Um, it's a heat stabilizer. So what you what I want to do is I would but what I did is I took uh, Mike's uh, watermelon candy magnum trick worm. I filled the glass up with them like so, and you, you can chop them up. That probably will help too. But just for for demonstration's sake, I'm just going to put them in right there. So what I would do is I would just pour a little a little bit of this heat stabilizer in there, and um, then then I'm going to stick it in a microwave. Um, you want to have a special microwave for this too. Don't yeah, use, you don't, don't want to use your home microwave. Don't use your home microwave. Definitely uh, don't use your wife's microwave. Just, <laughs> you, you can buy a real cheap one at Walmart if you or if you got an old one. It's perfect. That's what I'm using. I'm using a hand-me-down old one that somebody was going to throw away. And um, that those are perfect for this. Yeah, don't use your wife; she'll kill you. Yeah, you don't want to do that. And but you put it in the microwave. Every microwave is different, so the very first batch that you have is going to be your guinea pig. So what you're going to do? I would suggest doing it a minute at a time, and then stir it. In the first couple of minutes, it's not you're going to say it didn't melt it that much. So, but once it gets to a point where you can stir it, you get. The, you can use just a straight up kitchen knife. Um, it's really good because you can use the uh, the reflection off of that to kind of see your color. You can use that to kind of judge if you're actually making ones from scratch what it's going to look like. It darkens up a little bit after it after it uh, sets up, but it gives you an idea whether you put too much or too little coloring in that in that thing. And um, so you can use it for a dual purpose. But you just go in there, you. Just, uh, stir it up. I think, Mike, when I was doing yours, it took me three and a half minutes to where I could get it to where I could stir it real good. And I think I had to to uh, use, uh, I think I used another two minutes total. But but uh, but you want it in those two, last two minutes total that I did, I did them at 30 seconds and 45 seconds at a time. And I used this heat gun to tell me how close I was. And once I got slightly over 350, I poured. And the, the, the uh, Magnum Finesse Worms that, that Mike showed you is from a mold company called Angling AI. This is their uh, Magnum Finesse Worm. And they call it something different, but basically it's a six and three quarter inch worm. And it, I mean, it really looks like as close as I could find is the Magnum Trick Worm online. And I mean, it's got that flat bottom, like just like the like the Zoom does, and it got the little tail just like the Zoom does. And it's a little bit thinner and it's a little bit shorter, but I think it's going to work really well. I agree. It's going to be just fine for what we're doing with it. I um, mean, then maybe we look for a larger one in the but, future, but that's irrelevant. But. This mold right here, this is probably going to be the biggest expense that you're going to get with. This, this one cost me 114 bucks. And, and uh, how many will that make at one time? That will make five. Five. Mm -hmm. And it is an injection mold, correct? Yes, yeah. it's an injection mold, and that was the next thing that you're going to need. And you can these the prices on these vary. You can spend a lot of money for them, or you can spend like 35 bucks for them. And I think I paid 25 bucks for this one. Uh, this is one of my smaller ones. It's basically a syringe. Yes, and what you what you do is when after it's all melted up, you stick it down in there, pull it up, and um, just stick it in the mold, and it's pertinent. And you can see these these guys who make these things make it to where this little indention tip fits perfectly into that. It sure does. Buzz, and you just sit there and just slowly pump that thing down, and then after you get done, you pop it off. 
and then you go to the next one, go all the way down, and you see I got a, uh, a mark on there, so when I get to that mark, because th this particular one doesn't have, uh, it just pops out, so if you do that. <laughs> you go too far. You go too far, and that's not good. <laughs> So you're giving yourself a little head start. Yeah, I give myself a head mark. start. I put a little mark up there where I know I'm close. So I'm gathering there be a, any which way you do this. You're going to have a little bit of a learning curve on your own. Find some of your own grooves like you obviously found that yeah. by, by that popping off. Yeah, on after, so. after, having to, after having to dig it out a couple <laughs> of times with, 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 with like a little screwdriver, yeah, I learned that I needed to. <laughs> so you got your little giveaway mark. That's cool. <laughs> okay, one of the things that we mentioned in the last part of this video, because we're having some issues with the lighting um, going out on us, um, is you want to do this, especially remelting them if you're not using the dead on plastics, it doesn't have the fumes. You want to do this outside or in a well ventilated place. You do not want to do this in an enclosed area because the fumes are very strong. And, they, and from what I understand, they could be toxic too. So you do not want to breathe these fumes. So you make sure you've got some good fans set up if you're doing it in your garage. Definitely don't do it in an enclosed room. And if you can do it outside like I did, I actually did it in my boat storage. I put my microwave on the tailgate of my truck. And um, I set up a table really close by. So I didn't have to go that far once I got it melted down to where I needed it to be. But you definitely want to do this outside or you want to do it in a very well ventilated area. It's pretty simple and it can save you a lot of money too because especially like you, Mike, that's a guy that you use so many of these. That's the key right there. I mean, this, so, so, so basically that, that cut his cost in half. At least. Um, other than, you know, my friend, I feel in a way obligated. My friend just did a lot for me, and that probably took a couple hours of his time. Um, so it's really one of those things you want to weigh. Mm -hmm. um, I personally am very grateful that now I know for sure the plastics can be remelted. Um, so in that situation where I cannot get the baits that I want, I can solve that trouble. In essence, yes, um, you can you know, you can do it to save money if you want to go about it that way. Um and again, you can also, I know you had a lot of time, and you mentioned to me that it seemed like it took as much or more time to melt the old yes. as it did to just go ahead and make the new. Um, so again, if you're not in a pickle, you may just want to do the new product, which Correct. I think you can, you can talk to them in yeah. a minute about. Um, but don't be afraid to keep your old plastics in. Like you said, here's the most important thing to me that really registered. If you're going through a lot of them, like I had gone through. I went through 20 bags. 20 bags is 160 baits in one month. You know, the average person's probably not gonna do that. I would keep one bag's worth and try and melt one bag's worth. You're not saving yeah. any much time. What you wanna do is do like he does where he's got the Ziploc bag. You wait till you've got 100 of them. And then you, and, and the thing is, they don't, Unlike Mike, where he needs to separate them to where they're magnum tripper, if you got watermelon uh, candy brush hogs, you just put all your watermelon candy in one bag, and boom, you can make it into anything you need. It doesn't even have to be the stuff that you that's, that's in the bag. The, that's what I just think is really cool, too. So I'm now keeping all of my colors, all my commodities, I'm going to cook them in, in tubs, and when they get to be enough, we'll turn them into whatever we need at that time. Yeah, I mean, because it's... That's the beauty thing about it. Well, we had some technical difficulties in the corner uh, with the lighting, so there's, we're not gonna be able to give you the part on making the soft plastics from scratch. We'll do a part two video when he gets back from vacation, but I thought there was a lot of good information here on remelting the soft plastics and reusing them. Then I thought we should just go ahead and just do it a part one and a part two. When Mike gets back, we'll get together and do a part two of this video. So look for that, and like Mike always says, if you like this video, give him a thumbs up. Mike always appreciates your comments and questions, so leave those if you got any. And like Mike said, um, I've been working with Mike trying to get his YouTube channel going, and um, we got to the point where we think we've got a decent subscriber base now, and now we're working on mine. So if you could go to my uh, 
YouTube channel, Fork Lunker Man, and subscribe. I would really appreciate it because I'm kind of at the halfway point. YouTube kind of locks out a lot of important features until you reach the 1,000 subscriber mark. Right now, I'm about 550, so I could really use your help if you can give it. I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, tie lines.